Okay, I'm going to do a demonstration on the basics of Onshape. And once you have verified your email account and have a sign-in for Onshape, and it's been verified, you can then go to the Onshape sign-in page and put your information in and sign in. First thing you'll see on this page is your work that you have completed in the past, if you have any. You can scroll down, open it, modify it, change it, whatever you choose to do. Uh, over to the right, it gives you a little sample of uh, the file you have selected. You can see some information on that file, when it was created and whatnot. So, the first thing you want to look at is over here to the left. If you want to start a new project, you're going to hit the Create button. So you hit Create, and you come over here and you name that document. And I'm just going to name this one here Sample for the purpose of this video. And the, the whole point of having this program free online is the fact that you keep your documents public. Okay, The fact that they're public allows the, the programmers to keep it free. If you wanted to pay for this version, you can have your private documents. But for the purpose of education, I don't think we are needing to keep our files private. So give it a second to open up. And once it does open, let's take a look at what we see here. On the left-hand side, you will see somewhat of a timeline of all the moves you make and all the things you do for your drawing will be listed here in the order that you do them. At any time, you can click back on any step you see in this list and make a change to the drawing. In the center of the screen, you will see your views. Okay, You have your front, your top, and your right side view. And you notice if you hover over one of the views, they kind of light up in an orange color. Now, this would be like the isometric view, looking at the shape in 3D. And if you look over here, you can actually see the isometric cube. And if you select any one of these faces here, you can actually just focus in on that view. So if I click on front, you're just looking at the front. If I go to top, you're just looking at the top. Okay. And you also over here have a drop-down menu where I can always click on there and go right back to uh, isometric view. Now, the very first thing you want to do is start a new sketch. So where do I see that? Let's go over here to this here menu. And the very first thing you see here looks like a pencil. And it says here, create new sketch. If you hover over anything long enough, it will show you a set of instructions on how to, how to use that tool. So the first thing you want to do is create a sketch, because everything in Onshape works in sketches. Anytime you want to change a design or change a, a part of a design, you have to go into the sketch that it was created in and change it. So first of all, you need to create one. So let's click on Create a Sketch. The next thing the program asks you is, what sketch plane do you wish to work in? Okay. So for the purpose of this here video, um, I'm going to do a simple shape, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work from the front view. So I'm going to click on front. You'll notice that this here outlines sketch one around the front view. And I just want to look at the front view while I work. So I'm going to go over here to this isometric block, and I'm going to click on front. There. Now I'm just looking at the front view. So I want to make a, a basic shape here. And I'm going to start with the next tool in line here called the line tool. And the line tool allows you to just make simple lines. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to always want to start here in the origin where all the lines come together. And if I simply left-click with my mouse in the middle, and I go up, I notice that there's a little line off to the right-hand side of my cursor. That line means that I'm parallel to the axis, And that's where I want to be. I know my line is straight up and down when I see that line there. So I'm going to click anywhere, anywhere I want and then immediately type in the distance I want that line to be. In this case, I want the line to be one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to put in the decimal conversion to that, which is 1.25. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Immediately, you see the line change to an inch and a quarter in length. Now I want to travel in the right direction, and I want it to be parallel to the, the x-axis. So I look at that line that shows up below my cursor, and that tells me I'm parallel. So I'm going to click anywhere here, 
and I want this line to be a half of an inch. So I'm going to type in 0.5. Enter. And you see how the shape here is starting to dimension itself as I go. So now I want to travel down at a distance of 3 quarters of an inch, so that converts to 0.75. Enter. I then want to travel to the right at a distance of 1 inch. Enter. If I come down here now, I notice that two lines show up. That means I'm parallel to both axes. I can then click there and simply travel back to the origin to close that shape off. So there's the front view of the shape that I want to make. Okay, in order to see that in isometric, I can simply go back to this menu, click isometric. There's the front view. So now the next thing I want to do is really what this whole 3D modeling is based off of, which is to extrude something. And to extrude means to either push or pull a face of an object. So I want to push this thing uh, either back or I want to pull it forward. So in order to do that, I go to the um, extrude tool. So if I click on extrude, okay, it'll automatically highlight that and it'll pull it out, okay. It defaults at a depth of one inch. If I wanted to change this to three inches, I can do that just by pushing, you know, clicking three and hitting enter. Um, in this case, I do want it to be one inch. So I'm just going to go back and type in one again and and leave it at one inch because I know that that's the, the depth of my object. Once I am happy with everything that I see and my extrusion is correct, I'm simply going to click this here uh, green check to finalize that. And there's my shape right here. Okay. The nice thing about this program is that it's all cloud based. Everything is saved automatically. And if I just close this document out, what will happen is I just want to refresh my screen quickly. You will see the shape that I just created right at the top. Okay, and I could reopen that and keep working on it or modify it anytime I choose to. Okay? Now, if I were to submit that for printing as a 3D model, okay, I would want to be in the document. So I'm going to open it back up quickly. And here's how I would want to submit that. I first need to convert it to a file extension that the 3D printer will understand. And that is a .stl file. So all you need to do is go down here where it says Part Studio 1, right click, okay, and go to Export, because I want to export the file. When this opens up, you want to make sure you're in millimeters, because that's the, that's the measurement units that the 3D printer uh, reads. And then you're going to keep the format in STL. You're going to name your, your document. I'm just going to name this uh, sample like I did, like I did the, uh, the file name. And then I'm going to click OK. Once that saves, it's going to have a little tab down here. If I right click, I can, I can show in the folder that it downloaded to, which is right here. And then I can copy this and paste it anywhere. If you're submitting something to me for print, it's going to be in the Y drive under a folder called Targia Sievert. And then you're going to go to a folder called Targia Print. And then find your mods. Okay. And then you're going to open this up and you're going to place it in this folder. I may have folders here specifying color. I may not. Depends on the project. And other than that, if I go back to the software, my shape's still there. I can then close this out again. It'll be there if I go home and use the computer. It'll be there on your Chromebooks if you use your Chromebook. It'll be there in the classroom computer. Anywhere you go online, it'll be there. And that's about it. And I hope you had fun learning.